Okay. Um, so this class uh, will be about um, the basics what you need to know to start uh, PvP in Faction Warfare. Uh, I will not cover everything that's uh, inside Faction Warfare, stuff like maximizing loyalty points, how uh, contention system works, uh, what are the best ways to capture plexus, uh, fleets, corps, and so on. This will be out of scope of today's class. So we will focus uh, only on uh, stuff that's relevant for PvP. Uh, there are uh, four things that I want to talk about. Uh, the first one is uh, basic game mechanics that are relevant for PvP. The second one is uh, 1v1 archetypes that you should uh, know about and how you can use this knowledge to evaluate uh, potential fights. Uh, when we will talk about the current uh, metagame, how people typically fit their ships, what uh, types of frigates and destroyers are the most uh, common in faction warfare and so on. And uh, when we will cover um, uh, the most uh, competitive solo ships and uh, skill progression. So if you are a new player and you want to focus on a specific uh, type of weapons, when um, I will uh, talk about the natural progression from the Tech 1 frigate to the Navy Destroyer. And we will have a Q&A at the end. Uh, if you will have any questions during the class, when uh, please, un please ask them in uh, the uh, Discord channel. And I will occasionally go back and uh, uh, look at them. Okay, um, let's start with um, basic game mechanics. So what you will typically see when you go into a faction warfare system is uh, so-called uh, faction warfare complexes. A faction warfare complex is uh, the warpable anomaly in your probe uh, window. I think the default to open a probe window is Alt plus P. And you will see stuff like uh, Scout Navy 1, Medium Navy 5, and so on, and you can directly warp to them. When you warp to a Faction Warfare complex, it will appear on the overview as well, and you will land outside of uh, the acceleration gate. The acceleration gate is um, uh, the kind of a gate that limits the type of ships that can enter a specific complex. We will talk about the limitations uh, on specific complexes on the next slide. Here I just want to outline how the general mechanics work in uh, and around this uh, complex. So the acceleration gate uh, can be activated within 100 kilometers. This is a change that was made a few years ago. Previously, it was only uh, it was only possible to activate a gate within 10 kilometers, uh, which led to some tactics uh, around camping the activation zone. Now it's no, no longer possible. Um, everything uh, around the acceleration gate and inside the complex is dead space. Uh, this is a special type of um, uh, space, I guess, uh, where some game mechanics work differently. Uh, the main thing that you need to know is that um, uh, warps on grid do not work in dead space. So if you have uh, like a wreck or a fleet mate uh, 150 kilometers or more away from you, you cannot warp uh, directly to your fleet mate or to a bookmark or to a wreck when you are in dead space area. And similarly, uh, if you are in dead space, if your destination is in dead space area, uh, be it uh, your fleet mate, your bookmark or a wreck, 
when uh, when you initiate a warp to this uh, object uh, the game will interpret it as uh, warp to acceleration gate at a specified distance so if you if your fleet mate is hanging around uh, outside of a complex and you click warp at 100 kilometers to your fleet mate you will not land 100 kilometers away from your fleet mate you will land 100 kilometers of the acceleration gate and uh, if your target is inside the complex it it works the same so you will land at a specified distance outside of the acceleration gate so this stuff is useful like when you are fighting against multiple opponents and you can uh, separate them on grid because they cannot warp uh, directly to uh, their fleet mates and they cannot bookmark and warp to bookmarks as well um, the inside the complex is again the dead space pocket so it works exactly the same it's a dead space you cannot warp uh, to bookmarks, fleet mates, or anywhere uh, inside the complex. You can only burn naturally. Uh, there are two objects uh, inside a faction warfare complex. Uh, the first one is a warping beacon, and the second one is a capture point. We are about 10 kilometers away from each other. The capture point uh, is the center of sphere with a radius of 30 kilometers that uh, uh, identifies a capture radius. This is basically the area of space where you can start capturing the faction warfare complex if you are uh, a member of one of the uh, militias. If you are not, then it's irrelevant for you. And the warping beacon is the point in space where every ship that activates acceleration gate will land. So when someone activates acceleration gate, it will always land on the warping beacon inside the complex, within like uh, two or three kilometers. Um, okay, it covered the dead space rules already. Um, yeah, um, the only thing uh, that's probably worth mentioning here in addition is uh, that uh, you can quite easily check uh, what ships are in or outside the complex with uh, five percent degree discount if uh, this complex uh, has been activated and uh, it's visible in the overview uh, the discount is uh, a separate topic entirely i think if uni has uh, a separate class that covers uh, how to use discount so if you are not familiar with uh, this kind of mechanics when i suggest to uh, either attend this class or just to read if you need wiki on this uh, let's talk about uh, the tech limitations and ship sizes the great thing about faction warfare pvp is that these complexes uh, limit uh, both uh, ship sizes and ship techs uh, or ship types that can enter these complexes. So it creates uh, somewhat more fair PvP compared to the other regions, regions of space. Uh, and in addition, you generally, if you are inside the complex, you have a pretty significant amount of time uh, before the reinforcements uh, arrive inside uh, your plex. Uh, you can see how when they land outside and when they, they need to activate a gate and when they need to land inside the plex and when they need to burn uh, towards you. So it's quite uh, difficult to just uh, bait tackle and when everyone just warps uh, onto a fleet mate and blobs you it uh, puts significant limitations onto this gameplay so it's uh, a bit easier to uh, do solo pvp in faction warfare because of these limitations um, there are five types of complexes in faction warfare from scout to open uh, scout is the smallest and open is the largest 
uh, four of them are gated and open is not gated. It's just a uh, dead space area in, uh, in space without any acceleration gates. Uh, scouts allow only frigates, uh, smalls destroyers, mediums cruisers and largest battle cruisers. Uh, there are two types for every uh, plex. Uh, one is called navy and the other is advanced. Um, you will see them on the overview. There is a picture on the right. Uh, for example, medium navy one. Medium means that only cruisers uh, can enter this complex. Navy means that only tech one and faction cruisers or so navy cruisers can enter the complex. So tech two and tech three and pirate are not allowed. You cannot enter a medium complex in a gila, for example, or in a sacrilege or something like this. And uh, if it's an advanced complex, you will see, for example, at the bottom, large advanced one. It means that uh, battle cruisers and below can enter, and any tech can enter. So tech two battle cruisers uh, or anything, anything like this can enter. Um, in terms of payouts, uh, advanced ones are slightly more lucrative and um, they may attract a bit more attention, but if you are after PvP, you don't really care about that, you only care about what ships can potentially enter. So for example, if you are inside a small navy one, in something like a tech one destroyer, and you see outside uh, like a Hawk or an Enyo, which is Assault Frigate Tech 2, when uh, you don't care about this ship at all, he just can't enter your Plex. Um, there are um, uh, two main features of Pirate Faction Warfare. This is a recent addition to the game, well, relatively recent. Uh, these are so-called insurgencies in um, Kaldari Galant uh, space with um, uh, Guristas insurgencies and in the southern faction warfare these are angel insurgencies. Um, in the pirate faction warfare all complexes are advanced so any ship of a specified size can enter and uh, once a system reaches uh, stage 5 corruption it essentially turns into an ulcer with uh, bubbles, bombs, and our NULSEC mechanics are allowed. Uh, this is not really uh, common, like maybe like one or two systems at a time will be affected, and it's a good chance that these systems will not be uh, a frontline system for a normal faction warfare. So generally you may not care about it entirely if you are mostly after a normal uh, faction warfare. Um, if you decide to participate in um, faction warfare content as a neutral player, that is uh, without enlistment, uh, it uh, adds a couple more limitations. Uh, firstly, of course, you will not be allowed to uh, close any complexes and get uh, loyalty point rewards. Um, so, it, But if you are after PvP, it doesn't really matter again. Uh, but um, you will get suspect flag every time you activate um, ac an acceleration gate into a complex. And uh, you will get both standings and security status penalties for aggression against neutrals. Basically, any faction warfare member will be neutral to you, unless they are criminals already. So you will constantly get uh, both standings and uh, security status penalties. Um, again, if you like, don't really care about going into high sec when it doesn't matter, but if you do, then you will need to fix your security status at some point, which is the easy part, and then you will need to fix your standings as well, which is difficult. Um, but uh, it increases the number of targets potential, basically doubles it, because uh, as a neutral you can engage anyone in the area, while if you enlist you will only be able to engage neutrals and uh, players from the opposing faction. 
so these are the basic mechanics that you should be aware about. Now let's talk about um, 1v1 archetypes for frigates and uh, destroyers. So before going into this topic, I want to refer back to this uh, picture again and um, um, talk a bit about how the engagement starts. Um, usually you have someone inside a complex and a ship that's uh, about to enter a complex. Uh, the ship that is inside the complex can choose the initial engagement range. So if you are in a, like a kiting slicer with uh, optimal range of 25 kilometers, then you probably will hang around like 20-25 kilometers away from the beacon. Uh, and it will be your ideal engagement range. The ship that is about to enter a complex will always land at a warping beacon. Uh, this uh, situation is called uh, like the ship in position and the ship out of position. There are like different terminology, some like to call them uh, the ship that has positional advantage and ship that has positional disadvantage. Some call it uh, like a high ground and the low ground. I like to use uh, the poker terminology, which is in position and out of position. Uh, but the, the conclusion is the same. So every time you warp uh, in a complex that's already occupied by someone, you are fighting at a certain disadvantage because uh, the engagement range will be ideal for your opponent and uh, it may or may not, usually it's not ideal for you. Um, and after the engagement starts, uh, there is another a key, um, key idea that you should understand and it's called range control. Range control is uh, which ship can change the engagement range. Uh, so, for example, I warp in into a complex and I find myself uh, like nine kilometers off another ship. And my uh, optimal range of my guns is like three kilometers. Uh, can I close this distance to apply maximum damage or not? And uh, the range control is... Um, established with uh, medium slots typically. This is webs, scrums, um, electronic warfare, uh, propulsion and sometimes with newts, but it's uh, more rare. Uh, and um, if you have uh, both positional advantage and control, then you're quite likely to win. We will uh, talk about it on the next slide. Uh, let's actually switch into this, so it's less uh, theoretical. Um, let's uh, look at the uh, picture in the bottom left of the screen. Uh, the, it shows uh, four ships for damage per second uh, graphs relative to distance. Uh, the red line is for Blaster Merlin with Void Loaded. The green line is for Condor with Rage Rockets. The orange one is for Executioner, uh, Beam Executioner with X-Ray, I think, loaded. And uh, the blue line is uh, Condor with Light Missiles. Uh, the way uh, if is balanced is that every ship um, likes to fight at a specific range and at this specific range it will be better than other options. For example, blaster ships like a Merlin for example in this case, it likes to fight at a range lower than three kilometers and it will probably be the best uh, way to fight, uh, the best choice uh, for engagements within three kilometers. These are like blasters. And it's uh, they are called brawlers. 
when uh, we have uh, ships that like to fight between 5 and 10 kilometers. These are typically uh, missile ships, uh, rockets, uh, I should say, some rail guns, uh, some uh, pulse frigates with uh, scrumming weapons and so on. Uh, these ships uh, will excel at this specific range. They are called uh, scrum kiters. Scrum kiters because uh, they typically operate at the edge of scrum range, uh, which is uh, between 9 to 10 kilometers usually. Uh, when we have uh, ships that like to fight at the edge of web range, which is uh, 13 kilometers, if we discount any specific bonuses, uh, these are typically artillery, rail guns, beams, some rockets, if we have uh, bonuses to a rocket range and so on. And when we have uh, so-called kiting zone or kiters, these are ships that fight at the edge of uh, warp disruptor range, which is between 24 and 28 kilometers for attack-to fits. So uh, the takeaway is um, uh, every ship is strong at a specific range. And um, if you have positional advantage, then you can start the fight at this range, that is the best for you. And um, then the matter is, can you control this uh, ideal range for you? And if you can both start the engagement at the range that you like, and you can control this uh, distance during the fight, then it's quite likely that you will win. For example, uh, let's consider um, Merlin, a blaster Merlin, that warps into um, a rocket a condor that's inside the plex. The fight will start most likely around like 8 kilometers. And then uh, you can see that Merlin will have very poor damage, even if it loads null, it will have like less than 50 dps, I think. So Condor will have a massive advantage in terms of applied DPS. And then the question is, who has uh, the control? Can uh, Merlin close the distance? Typically, the answer is no, uh, because uh, Merlin is a slower Take One frigate, and it usually has only one web. While uh, the Condor is uh, the attack Take One frigate, it will be faster. And uh, it often has uh, two webs, but even with one web, it will still have the control. So the entire fight will be at around eight kilometers, and um, Merlin will simply apply very little damage. So the Condor is very likely, very likely to win. Uh, if the opposite happens, for example, when uh, you are in a rocket Condor and you are about to warp into Merlin, then it's a much closer fight, because Merlin will start the fight at very ideal range, and it will apply a lot of damage initially, but Condor most likely will be able to burn away and establish a range around 8 kilometers. And it, it's like a fair fight, where uh, you kind of get a lot of uh, incoming damage first, but when uh, you establish uh, hopefully uh, range control and when it depends on like piloting and who has uh, better skills and uh, down to basically tank to DPS. So this is uh, the way to very quickly assess how the fight is gonna go. You generally want to avoid fights where you engage uh, out of position and where you don't have positional advantage unless it's an uh, exact mirror. For example, you're fighting Blaster Merlin against Blaster Merlin. In this case, you don't really care about this stuff because it's a mirror anyway. Um, and um, generally every ship uh, in uh, every frigate and every destroyer, I should say, will fall into one of these five categories. I should mention the anti-kiting uh, role the anti-kiters are basically brawlers designed to counter-kiters. Uh, 
because if these ships uh, wouldn't exist, then everyone would kite, uh, because you will have uh, range uh, control and range uh, and positional advantage in plex. But anti kiters this is like stuff like um, micro warp drive Atron with Scrum, extremely fast uh, brawlers that can catch uh, kiters, pin them down, and kill them. Uh, how does the meta looks? So the remaining of this class will be. Um, uh, I will kind of refer back to these uh, archetypes, uh, and I will mostly talk about uh, the meta in terms of these uh, uh, these archetypes that are common in faction warfare. Uh, this is. Um, like a quick reference chart, a chart I just took from the yearbook that covers um, every frigate, uh, every combat frigate in the game. Uh, let's talk about uh, specific classes uh, and let's talk about the most common archetypes in uh, each of them. Uh, so first one is uh, Tech 1 class. Uh, the Tech 1 frigates are in a bit of a weird position right now uh, because um, every Navy Plex allows Navy frigates to come in and generally people like to fly Navy frigates. So when you take a Tech 1 frigate you kind of have to fight against Navy frigates quite often. Uh, frigates like hookbills, comets, and so on. And uh, the way if PvP is balanced, it's quite difficult uh, to kill a Navy frigate in a Tick 1 frigate, unless you fly some hard counters or some like, really weird setups that counter the typical Navy frigates. So what has happened in recent years, the Tech 1 class is actually less popular than Navy class right now, uh, although they're still quite commonly used. Um, there are two subcategories in the Tech 1 frigates. There is an attack class and a combat class. The attack frigates are essentially budget interceptors they are very fast, but relatively fragile. Uh, stuff like Atron, Condor, Executioner, and Slasher. These are four Tech 1 attack frigates. Uh, they mostly rely on uh, control, damage mitigation, and speed to um, win their fights. Uh, quite tricky uh, ships to use, uh, especially for a newer player, because they don't really rely on stats, but mostly on piloting. The Tech 1 combat class are slower, but uh, tankier frigates. Uh, there is a pretty big selection of what you can choose. Uh, we will talk about uh, the progression a bit later, so I will kind of skip that for now. The meta in general uh, in Tech 1 and actually in Navy as well are all about brawlers and scrum kiters. So this would be the vast majority of frigates that you will encounter. Uh, the brawlers are afterburner, scrum, web, and close range weapons. And uh, scrum kiters are again afterburner, scrum, web, sometimes double webs, with uh, slightly longer range weapons. Um, kiters are very uncommon because CCP kind of continuously nerfed all the decent uh, frigate kiters uh, that use uh, light missiles, drones, so it's not not many ships can actually kite properly uh, nowadays. And uh, web kiters just rely on a very specific uh, selection of bonuses that many frigates just don't have. Uh, the Navy class is uh, the most popular, and uh, you will see hookbills, comets, slicers, and firetails all the time. These are like uh, the main 
uh, frigates that you will uh, fight against in uh, faction warfare. Uh, there are two other classes that are kind of go under the radar, the Eivor class and the Exploration class. And they both can be fitted uh, for solo PvP, and they both actually pretty decent, especially Exploration class. I tried uh, probe fleets, Heron navies, they are pretty competitive, but people just don't like to use them. They are not great or overpowered, but they are completely usable. Um, and when you have uh, pirate frigates, uh, pirate frigates are very, very uncommon nowadays uh, because the vast majority of plexus in normal faction warfare is uh, navy class. So pirate frigates cannot enter the vast majority of plexus. And um, people just stopped using them because it's kind of difficult to find any fights in these uh, in these frigates but they are a bit more common in the pirate uh, faction warfare where plexus allow uh, pirate frigates to enter um, as for the destroyers uh, you have uh, eight tick one destroyers and uh, four navy destroyers plus some um, um, more weird stuff like metamorphosis and uh, have a exploration oriented destroyers um, and you have pirate destroyers as well but these are extremely rare uh, even in uh, pirate pvp in in pirate faction warfare uh, the situation there is quite similar to frigates uh, because so many people use navy destroyers nowadays uh, tech one destroyers are kind of oppressed by the navy destroyers and navy destroyers are just flat out better than tech one but you can still use uh, Tech 1 destroyers, uh, and they are, I think, more viable than uh, Tech 1 frigates because you can quite easily kill Navy frigates with Tech 1 destroyers, and they are very engageable. But just beware, beware that uh, Navy destroyers are simply a bit better. They are just like straightforward upgrades from Tech 1. Um, how does uh, the um, 1v1 win rates and popularity looks in Faction Warfare? And this chart shows uh, the number of uh, 1v1 fights and uh, the win rates for every frigate in the game. This is from 2022 to 2023, so for two years, a bit less than two years, but basically for two years. Um, as you can see, um, uh, there are pretty clear strength differentiation between Tech 1, Navy and Pirate Frigates. The Tech 1 are green, uh, Navy are blue and Pirate are red. And like in terms of win rates, uh, there are like pretty clear differentiation between uh, these classes. Um, as I said, the Navy class is actually more popular. For example, Comet is actually the most uh, the most common frigate in Faction Warfare. Then goes Tristan, then the Hookbill, which is again a Navy frigate, then Rifter, and then Slicer, which is again a Navy frigate. So generally, when you undock a frigate, you need to be able to fight Navy frigates generally. Uh, these three specifically, because this will be on your disc all the time. And uh, in terms of strength, um, the frigates are generally quite balanced, so I wouldn't say that uh, the Comet is like head and shoulders above anyone else. It's uh, probably the easiest to use, and uh, it's as strong as uh, many other frigates like a Hookbill or Vigil Fleet. But uh, I think all in all, it's pretty balanced, uh, both uh, in the Navy category and in the uh, Tech 1 category. Uh, so you can use pretty much anything uh, that you like to use, because all of these ships are usable, uh, even though some may be just slightly, 
slightly weaker than the others, but not by much. Okay, let me check um, questions uh, before we move to the next uh, topic. Uh, how quickly can a ship in position lock aggress a ship landing out of position? Okay, good question. Um, the lock range, let me just move a bit to the back, uh, like here. Uh, the lock range, uh, uh, the lock speed uh, is um, ship specific. Uh, frigates uh, lock targets uh, faster than destroyers, destroyers faster than cruisers and so on. And uh, it also depends on uh, the size of a target that you are trying to lock. So a frigate will lock another frigate slightly slower than another destroyer, because destroyer is kind of a bigger ship. Um, the main takeaway here probably is that um, if you are fighting the same uh, size of ship, then you will lock each other at about the same time. Uh, when you try to catch um, Kaita, for example, on warping, uh, this generally comes down to the skills on your character and your pink. Uh, sometimes kiters will be able to escape scrums uh, by the time you finish locking, but sometimes they will not. Uh, it really depends on uh, like ships, characters, uh, pink, whether or not they have uh, snakes and so on. Generally, if you are in position and the kite warps into you, you should try to uh, catch it, because you will have a pretty decent chance. Uh, when you fight a larger ship or vice versa, uh, the lock range for a large ship will be quite slow. So when you engage, when you warp into the plex in a frigate and the plex is occupied by a destroyer, the destroyer will not be able to lock and uh, scrum you uh, if you decide to warp out or if you decide to uh, burn away from the warping beacon. Um, generally, um, uh, frigates, uh, generally when you fight a larger ship, the smaller ship can always decide if he wants to engage or not. That's just how the game is balanced. So destroyer will not be able to lock and scrum you if you just land and decide to bail. You will be able to bail. Uh, this is of course assuming that a larger ship will not have something like sensor boosters or something like this. Um, so if you bring a Tech 1 frigates, you're bringing a knife to a gunfight. Um, kind of, yes. Um, if you want to fight um, a Navy uh, frigates in a Tech 1 frigates, it will be quite tricky. Um, I think uh, you either need to understand very well how the meta works, so, for example, you can uh, kill some brawlers with a web kiting ship. This is possible. Uh, but, uh, like, pound for pound, uh, scrum kiter against scrum kiter, you are not just going to do anything. Because uh, Navy frigates are just straightforward upgrades in terms of any uh, all the stats compared to Tech 1 frigates. So, for example, if you decide to fight a hookbill in a Kestrel, it's just not gonna work, uh, because hookbill is just better. Um, but, uh, like, if you want to fly Tech 1, it's uh, completely possible, uh, but you need to just think a bit out of a box. For example, a Kite in Tristan's are viable um, if you are in position because people will happily engage Tristans in general, and if we are after burner brawlers, then you will have uh, both positional advantage and uh, range control. We will be able probably to kill all of your drones, and it will be a draw, 
but it's uh, it's a fine fight uh, overall. Um, you can use something like Newton Tristans uh, against uh, Cup Hungry frigates like Comets, and you will have a chance to newt them out and then just finish them off uh, before and they kill you. Or you can use something like Kiting Breachers, for example. Uh, these are also quite unexpected, and people will happily engage you out of position as well. Web kiting executioners as well are doable, and so on. So there are some options, but they will be just a little bit more limited. You will not be able to engage uh, like in a straight up uh, DPS race against navy frigates. Take one are just just weaker in uh, in this case. Um, yeah, like rail atrons as well. They are also working. Uh, so basically, stuff that uh, counters the established meta, uh, they they will work. Uh, artillery slashers will work work as well with uh, tracking disruptor as well. Uh, kiting condors works fine as well. So there are options. Uh, kiting punishers also will work, and so on. There are some options. Yeah. They just will be a bit limited. Um, okay, uh, let's talk um, in conclusion about the competitive one v one frigates uh, in terms of like a natural skill progression. Uh, as I said, uh, in the middle of a class, there are actually the balance is quite nice, so you generally can use pretty much anything you want. But as a new player, you generally want to kind of progress naturally so that you don't need to cross train a bunch of uh, support skills, uh, weapons, drones, uh, and other stuff. You kind of want to, okay, I trained uh, hybrids, tech 2 hybrids, and I want to use uh, ships that uh, utilize tech 2 hybrids so I don't cross train into other stuff. And uh, the things that I will talk about in on the next three slides will kind of follow this logic. Um, so you will see um, uh, three or four ships in every line uh, going from Tech 1 Frigate to Navy Destroyer. And uh, the stars are my very subjective opinion on how this ship performs in solo PvP. Uh, three stars are like this ship is one of the best. It doesn't mean it doesn't mean that it's uh, like overpowered or anything. It's just pretty good. Uh, one of the best ships in this class for solo PvP. Uh, two is like usable, but not the greatest and not the worst. And one is kind of not really the best ship uh, for solo PvP. Um, so let's start with the hybrids. These are the most um, common in faction warfare currently. These are either blast brawlers or rail scrum kiters or web kiters. Uh, so here I would skill from the Atron to Comet Catalyst and Navy Catalyst. Uh, Atron is um, very capable. For the Tech 1 frigate, it's very fast and it has a fall of bonus, which uh, allows you to be very flexible. You can scrum kite with blasters, you can web kite, you can even kite with rail guns. Um, so you can kind of play around the weaknesses of stronger ships uh, very well. It's uh, It requires a bit of uh, experience and uh, understanding, but it's a very capable ship. Nonetheless, the Comet is basically just a straightforward one of the best Navy frigates in the game. Uh, very easy to fly. A bunch of um, EHP is in hull, so you don't need to manage anything. The DPS is amazing, the speed is okay. Um, so, very easy to fly, very strong, very popular, very good choice. And uh, the skill transition from Atron is. Uh, very smooth. And when you have uh, Catalyst and Navy Catalyst, the Catalyst is not the greatest uh, Tech 1 destroyer for uh, solo PvP because it has only two 
medium slots, control is kind of bad, and it's a bit of a one-trick pony, because everyone will expect you to try to brawl your blasters. Um, but it's, uh, it's pretty doable. Uh, not the greatest, but it's okay. The Navy Catalyst is uh, very good. There are many variations how you can fit it. You can fit it like just an upgrade to a Catalyst with uh, blasters uh, and macro warp drive because it gets three slots instead of two on a Catalyst, so it kind of uh, mitigates the biggest uh, weakness of a Catalyst. Or it has uh, enough power grid to fit um, overprop like Tenement Afterburner with rails and uh, you can do all kinds of stuff with a navy catalyst it's one of the uh, best uh, navy destroyers in my opinion um, as for the drones uh, the drones are amazing because they give you a lot of flexibility uh, basically the biggest uh, power of drones is that you can launch them aggress and forget uh, you don't really need to control your opponent the drones will DPS will apply DPS anyway and uh, you have all the high slots uh, available for utility if you need to you can fit guns of course but you don't have to um, so you get just an amazing amount of uh, possible fits for example for Tristan you can fit it as a brawler with blasters you can fit it as a scrum kiter with rails, you can fit it as a newton ship, and you can fit it as a kiting ship with shield. And all four are pretty decent. And your opponent will have to guess what kind of uh, fit are you running, and it's kind of important because fighting against a newton Tristan, fighting against kiting Tristan is completely different things. And the same goes for Algas. Um, you can fit uh, just a straight up brawl algas, uh, scrum kiting algas, newton algas, kiting algas with shield extender or even um, tenement afterburner over prop algas. All five of them works okay. And again, since you have drones and you even get bonus for drone speed on algas and dragoon, they will always apply on frigates. Um, so this is very flexible, very nice uh, destroyer as well. The unfortunate thing about this lineup is that you don't have any navy destroyer that uses drones, and uh, the navy frigate is kind of terrible. And the CCP nerfed uh, Tristan many times because it was such a dominant ship, and when they released uh, Navy Maulus, which is a drone ship as well, they made it so bad uh, they were kind of afraid that it will become a new meta. Uh, they made it so bad that it's just never used really. Um, I don't really recommend. It's not completely horrible, but um, I think you will struggle a bit. It's just the, the stats on Navy Malus are just so bad, like uh, the speed and everything. Uh, the fitting space is actually, I think, worse when on, when on Tristan and, and so on. So it's just kind of difficult to figure to use. Um, so you essentially, if you go after drones, you will be limited to Tristan, Algas, and maybe Dragoon, if you decide to cross train into um, MR destroyers. Uh, missiles. Uh, for missiles, I want to talk about uh, two lineups, one for Kaldari and one for Minmatar. They are quite different. For Kaldari, you have uh, just straightforward scrum kiters, um, no cross training required. You just uh, train missiles and use scrum kite. That's pretty much it. Um, Kestrel is uh, pretty decent. Hookbill is one of the best. Um, there are again a couple of uh, variations that you can use. I think I have uh, an entire um, class on Hookbill which you can uh, watch. It's a very flexible frigate with five medium slots. Uh, very common, very strong, um, perfectly fine to use. Uh, for Minmatar, they are much trickier 
to manage and to train because you need to train at the very least drones uh, to make them viable. Both Breacher and Navy Vigil rely on drones to complement missile DPS and it's like I think about 20 to 25 percent of DPS comes from drones so you need to have a decent drone skills as well. And uh, they are a bit trickier to manage. Uh, Breacher for example is um, active tanking frigate and you need to be very efficient with your reps to squeeze the maximum out of the ship. And uh, Navy Vigil is typically a web kiter, so you kind of need to uh, manage it properly. Um, it's it's a bit weird in terms of micromanagement, unlike Hookbell. Uh, but if you know how to use them, these are probably the best frigates uh, in the hands of experienced pilots. Uh, the unfortunate thing is that uh, you have essentially no destroyers uh, to progress. Both Korax and Talwar are good um, fleet destroyers, but they are not great in solo. They are usable, but they are not great. And there are no Navy destroyers at all that use missiles. So like, if you want to fly some destroyers, you will need to cross train into something else from from missiles. Uh, projectiles and lasers. Uh, the projectiles, um, they are kind of strange. Um, they are good on many ships, but they are not amazing on any of these ships. Uh, you can use uh, both Mm, auto cannons for brawling and scrum kiting, and you can use artillery for scrum web kiting or just straight out kiting. Um, but um, they will not be uh, the greatest in terms of tank and DPS. Uh, the things that make the thing that makes um, projectile ships uh, interesting is that all Min Matar frigates and destroyers have uh, excellent base speed and excellent control. So you can be um, uh, very opportunistic in the ways that you take fights in any of these ships actually. Because very often the high base speed of Min Matar ships allow you to escape when fights go uh, wrong. This applies both to Firetail, especially, and to Thrasher and Navy Thrasher. And Min Matar ships are kind of considered a little bit weaker than uh, some of the um, uh, other choices, so people will be a bit more willing to engage here. Um, as for the lasers, uh, this uh, lineup is kind of interesting. So when you go Amar, uh, you have a very polarizing choices between uh, kiting and web kiting and just uh, straight up rolling. Um, I think uh, Slicer is like one of the best kiting frigates in the game. So if you want to um, learn how to kite in a frigate, you will eventually end up in a Slicer anyway. So it can be a good uh, choice for you. Executioner is also um, usable. Generally, I see it as a web kiting ship, but you can kite in it as well with pretty decent success. But I think you should, um, if you want to learn uh, kiting style, you generally should just upgrade to a slicer. It's not much uh, more expensive and it's just uh, much better uh, for this style. Uh, the, but there are also some uh, choices that are decent for brawling. For example, Tormentor, Crucifier Navy, Magnet Navy, they all pretty good as well. If but if you want, they are good if you want to brawl and not kite. Um, the destroyers are generally considered brawlers, and they are amazing in this role. Uh, the reason why is um, they actually counter, not counter, but they can fight kiters as well. If you fit uh, uh, either pulses with a specific uh, fits or you, if you fit uh, beams 
because they they hit so hard and so far that even when you engage a kiter you are still uh, able to be competitive at a long range um but uh, naturally i think they are brawlers and uh, they are pretty good at this style as well um so i think this is everything i wanted to say we still have five minutes for q a so if you have any questions uh, then feel free to ask um, the recording will be available on eVUni and on my YouTube and uh, Patreon. And generally, if you're interested in uh, Frigate PvP, I suggest you to check out some of the um, uh, content where I do uh, both uh, lectures on this topic and um, um, some commentary on interesting 1v1 fights and some interesting challenges. For example, recently I have been running the Iron Man PvP challenge where I start as an alpha character and um, I am allowed to use only modules that I either loot or build myself. And I basically all I do is PvP in this uh, under these restrictions. So it's kind of funny to watch me suffer um, under these uh, very strict restrictions. And you will maybe learn uh, how to actually get uh, kills even as a very underskilled alpha with uh, like tech one uh, fits. So you don't uh, uh, need very expensive uh, fits, uh, very optimized. Uh, uh, setups and uh, high-skilled characters to get PvP in Faction Warfare. Uh, this is uh, available on YouTube, I think. Yeah, on, on Patreon, I, I don't uh, have it only on YouTube. But uh, on both Patreon and YouTube, this is just Eve Frigates. <clears throat> okay, I see no more questions. So thank you. Uh, so much for joining this uh, lecture and this class and um, I hope to see you in the next ones. Thank you again and uh, goodbye. Oh, actually, Thank you. I forgot to send a class feedback. Let me just uh, post it in the uh, Classroom Bravo channel. So if you have any feedback uh, please feel free to share and I will uh, uh, take it into consideration and improve my classes in the future. Okay, for now, surely thank you and see you in the next ones. Bye-bye.